support there. They bejazel you. Oh, man. <laughs> they bejazeled. I'm going to bejazel my denim jacket when we're done. Oh. <laughs> when, I, when I was 13, I had an embarrassing moment where I bejizzled in my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bejazeled. Bejazeled. Oh I apologize. <laughs> And you're gonna, you can totally cut that out. <laughs> I don't know. I'm laughing pretty hard. Are we recapping an episode of yeah. Big Mouth or Picard? I apologize. <laughs> I think you watched the wrong thing, too. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> All right. So I did not uh, put down a synopsis. So we'll just get right into this. <laughs> so the first scene, we're on Planet Vergesen. And it's in the Hypatia system. And then we see the Seven Domes. It was 13 years ago. Uh, we have well, who we find to be Ichab on a table. And someone is like leaning over them and trying to pull out his eyeball and stuff. And it's really disgusting. Um, so we find out that... Um, this is Witch Hazel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she's, um, you know, trying to, to uh, get all of his Borg parts out to sell. And um, we also find out later for sure that she wasn't using any anesthetic, which is scary. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. pretty terrible. Uh, but I, I said that uh, Rebecca, you and Neil had been talking about him coming back. So good on that, too. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> Seven comes in. Um, she tries to kill, you know, kill everybody or that's in there and everything and get them out of the way. And she wants to take each up with her, but he apparently knows that he just can't make it. So he's telling her to leave and she's getting emotional, you know, because to, to her, he's like her family. Um, so, you know, like in an act of mercy, she shoots him with her phaser so that, you know, put him out of his misery. Um, and then she starts crying and she's holding him and everything. And then we see a shot from like the other room and it's like a cold storage area with bits of Borg hanging around. Mm. Yeah. Um, which was creepy. But also if you looked at it long enough, there was only like one line of a couple things hanging up and it wasn't like full. Like you almost would have needed to have more Borg parts hanging to really make it creepy. I think. Mm. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's true. It was it, it was pretty sparse. Like mm-hmm. unless they had like a separate freezer where they kept more parts. Or maybe you know, they the, sold all the parts. That's true. They could have sold all the parts or any. Um th- th- this scene was very hard to watch for mm-hmm. me. Like uh, besides, you know, like like the body horror stuff, which which I've seen worse, but um the I- the impact of who each had was to 7 of 9 and the fact that when she does she does kill him out of mercy so that he could just have a quick death she she calls him my child and there was a whole episode in voyager where seven was going to die because her her cortical node um basically kicked the bucket and she and they couldn't have access to another one Echeb gave her his so he basically gave up like the equivalent of like a kidney or a lung to keep her alive. So when the doctor is like, where's that cortical node, buddy? It's got to be here somewhere. He doesn't have one because he gave it to seven. So it's it's a very sort of a deep cut fan moment Easter egg for for Voyager and who really seven cool. is. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea because, like I said many times, I have not watched Voyager yet. Well, I and I just watched like mm. season seven of Voyager, so it's it's super fresh in my mind. Well, uh, I looked it up, and at the time that he died, so thirteen years ago from Picard time, ten years before that is when he had been freed from the Borg Collective, and two of those years were aboard the Voyager. Uh, so that was season six and seven. Like you said, you watched, just watched that. So you just got to see him uh, when he was another person. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's supposed to be like 2386 and then it flips back to 2399, apparently. 
so we know what's going back and forth. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're, we're left on this scene with her crying, and it is, I mean, even though I had not seen the series that had the two of them in it, knowing that they had been Borgs, and Borgs don't, or have, you know, uh, emotions taken out, and they don't have their own kind of thoughts and feelings and stuff, mm-hmm. the fact that they had so much humanity back in them, and that they were... Uh, they were sad and crying and he was just like you know he was he was giving up his life so that she could go and you know not get caught and all that kind of thing and mm-hmm. um you know that was pretty touching i'm sure it would have been even more if i had the rest of the backstory but you know just knowing how the borg are it seemed more um uh, emotional right yeah. the next scene we're at stardust city on free cloud uh, that's in the Alpha Doratus system, and it's two weeks ago from where the episode of Picard had left off. There's a bar, uh, there's a bartender cleaning glasses, and apparently that's all they do unless they're pouring drinks. I mean, I guess to be <laughs> advice, it's just, that's what you just always see. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's like, I don't, you know, nobody's gonna go get ice or... Or restock or anything. They're just going to clean glasses and pour you drinks. <laughs> they got to look busy, you know, just like every man. Just look busy. <laughs> um, you don't want to, you know, you don't need your pit boss or whatever the fuck yelling at you. There you go. There you um, go. <laughs> but here's the thing. I got a question. Uh, did Stardust City, has this shown up before in anything? To my knowledge, no. Yeah, not that I know. Is it, is it a nod to Ziggy Stardust? Ooh. It, it could be. I don't, um... It certainly could be this this planet this city felt very Ziggy Stardust. Mm-hmm. It was like Vegas meets Blade Runner meets Ziggy Stardust. Mm-hmm. You know, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not uh, did I, I Blade Runner? Did I say Blade? No, 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 no. Blade you Runner. said Blade Runner. Oh, thank God! I was like, did I just say the Wesley Snipes movie? Yeah. Like, what's the? F- <laughs> uh, yeah, all those vampires <laughs> walking around. It was crazy. It's the Daywalker. Oh God! I, almost, I thought I embarrassed myself there. No, no, I did no, that. no, no, but you're, you're, you're right on. I did that earlier. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a piano player, and she's playing a Scott Joplin song. Is what the? It's like it sounded familiar, but I wasn't sure what it was. But that's all it told me on the closed captioning. Um, but she's a little person, and it's she's not wearing like crazy makeup, so it's not like oh she's an alien, so she could just be an actual person and be small. And nobody has to say anything about it. And that's just exciting for mm-hmm. someone who is two inches away from being considered a little person. <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> no, seriously. I could have Are gotten... you serious? Yeah. <laughs> if I had been two inches shorter, I could have gotten like scholarships and stuff for being a small person. I, I did not know that. I'm sure. I did not realize that. No, I'm, I know I'm, you're, I, I know you're tiny. I'm I five met foot you tall, but if you're, if you're 4'10 or under, I think is what it was then. It might be shorter now. I wrote, a, a large, ugly man in a pinstripe, double-breasted suit walks up to three women. So this is, <laughs> this is Mr. Vup, and he walks up to Bejazel and two unidentified women who apparently are like her employees, bodyguards. They're her Mean Girls mean crew. Girls. Yeah, they're her crew. They're her <laughs> On Wednesdays, you wear pink. <laughs> The two women in white probably were for the third who looked so much like Marina Sirtis that I had to pause it to make sure it wasn't her. Because they oh. show her from the side and I'm like, what? what? wait. I I questioned if that was Troy. I, yes. I really did. Thank God I'm not the only one. No. Right? The entire internet has, has questioned if that was Troy. <laughs> oh my God. I thought I was losing my mind. And I was like, oh my God, she looks, she looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> She hasn't aged a day. Yeah. <laughs> no, she definitely, she looks like Counselor Troy's evil sister. Yeah. Like, that's what she yeah. looks like. Yeah, I was glad when I got on Twitter and I saw other people were saying that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it's so weird. And it's like, then she starts talking and she has a completely different voice. And you're like, okay, I'm not crazy. Just, they pick somebody who looks exactly like her. He came in here to tell her that uh, Bruce Maddox is there. Oh, hey, we're going to see Bruce Maddox. All right. Good job <laughs> guessing that, Rebecca, again. <laughs> so, And, you know, Mr. Vup's just like, yeah, what do you want me to do? And she wants him to kill to kill Bruce Maddox. Well, he is going to go. And then she's like, wait a minute, change of plans. <laughs> so it's like, OK, 
Okay, what's she going to do? Is she going to kill him herself? We see Bruce sitting in another part of the bar. And he looks very worried. He, he's got like a, a big gray beard and curly hair and stuff. And He looked just like Daniel Stern to me from Home Alone. He did look a lot like Daniel Stern, didn't he? <laughs> and I was like, by the end of the episode, I was like, holy shit. He got the crap kicked out of him just like <laughs> Daniel Stern did in Home Alone. <laughs> Right? It's like he looks like Daniel Stern, except for the parts of his hair that aren't gray are darker because his hair's like brownish, lighter. You know, like that was mm-hmm. almost maybe his face wasn't quite as thin, but it was close enough. It was weird. Uh, what is it with all of these lookalikes? They're trying to throw us off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Joe Pesci alien walked into the scene. <laughs> You know, I was done with this episode when the Macaulay Culkin guy comes in, you know. Just just put his hand on his cheeks. Ah! I think I think the people that are listening to this episode are done with this episode. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay, we already have uh, a a one star review. Well not a review, just a one star. I was actually looking at that today, but the coward didn't leave a comment. Yeah, Yeah. I saw that. I was like Okay, whatever. I understand. Well, it has to happen eventually. I know, and we've had problems with our audio, and I'm trying to go back and fix them. Thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. Who's sticking with us? Anyway, so Jay comes in. She's got two glasses. One of them has some drink in it, and the other one doesn't, and she sits his down on the table, and it's just an empty glass. There's a decanter in front of him, you know, and she tells him he should get a drink. And she also was like, but she's just like... Oh, you've looked better. (laughs) Thanks, lady. Uh, But you can tell that she's trying to really um, pretend like someone's not probably about to kill him or give him up or whatever his eventual fate is supposed to be. This guy went through the ringer this episode. I am telling you. Like, I was, it was just, it was a nightmare for this guy. They might as well just put him in a red shirt the entire episode. I felt so bad for this guy. With the kick me sign on the back. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. (laughs) Definitely. Um, and here I was talking about that, um, Ailes, he doesn't actually look too far off from what Brian Brophy looks like now, because I found the picture of him on the, um, the Caltech, um, website, and, except for he didn't have a full beard, he had, like, a mustache and whatever and stuff, so, so that was interesting, but, um, like I said, don't know why he didn't come back, maybe he, they didn't ask him, maybe he didn't want to, but he did... His theater group did put on the Star Trek musical. The <laughs> it's it's called uh, "Boldly Go," the Star Wars parody, and they did that. Star Wars parody. Star Wars. It does say Star Wars parody. Why did they? Would it be Star Trek? I thought it was a Star Trek one. Yeah, I don't know why it says Star Wars. I didn't type that out. I just copied and pasted that. Oh, I know. It's it's like, uh, that's bizarre. Every once in a while, you get an article like that. That's bizarre, it unless they're Star trying Trek. to be. <laughs> I know that it's it... Star Trek, because they did it yeah. here a couple years ago, uh, but I didn't get to see it. Uh, uh... And I have a link, and I'm going to put that in the show notes, because you can watch it on YouTube if you want to watch it, if you get bored or what? whatever. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Everybody just turned off this episode and they're watching it now. Yeah, I'll, I'll go watch that thing now. They come back. <laughs> they, please come back and listen to the rest of this. <laughs> we promise we'll be better. No. Uh, so then we go to the intro. Um, again, since we hadn't talked to you in a while, Brian, what do you think about the music and you know the the credit scenes and everything? You know, it's not like other Star Trek shows. Do you have any thoughts or feelings about it, or do you just skip it? No, 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 no. There are, like, uh, what was it? Uh, the it, it is very different, And but the, when there's the, the, the moments of the music that's very familiar, when they do hit, they hit you harder, I feel like. And it was, like, when Picard said Engage in the previous episode and then we got like that old like you know classic next generation music i was just like oh my god you know but <laughs> i you know i love the i love the intro and i love the love the, the this theme song and everything i think it's fantastic so cool cool so um just one quick note before we move on um <clears throat> in the scene with uh jay and maddox where she gives him a drink mm-hmm. little 